This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and here's something I don't get to do every day. This is the MSI Ghost Pro, a 15.6 inch gaming laptop. I mean, it's like 4.2 pounds, they say. Our scale says maybe a couple ounces more than that. Super slim, 0 0.78 inches, full featured. And though it might not look like the Ghost of all, the Ghost Pro here has the NVIDIA GTX 970M Maxwell CPU 6 gigs of DDR5 VRAM inside. That's what makes this one so special. You can look at it now. So this is the MSI Ghost Pro. This is the latest model right here with the NVIDIA GTX 970M GPU. And that's the important part here. The, the Ghost Pro GS60 has been around for a while now and the form factor has stayed mostly the same. There's nothing wrong with that. It's actually a very good looking slim laptop, especially considering it's not, well, in the boutique price range that can go even higher. But what's special is what changes inside. We've seen the GTX 860M, it's Kepler architecture, a little bit older. We've seen the 870M, which was, well, you could use it to fry an egg. It was unfortunate because the, the 800 series of GPUs tended to run, well, pretty darn hot. And putting them in really slim designs like this 0.78 inch thin machine could be a challenge. The GTX 970M, the latest generation GPU, just starting to appear in... MSI and some ASUS Republica Gamer laptops it hasn't even made it to Alienware yet. That's that that's one of those generational things that you, you listen to the promises. Oh, it's going to be so much faster. Oh, maybe it's even going to run cooler. That's actually not a promise you hear very often. It's going to run cooler. In this case, it was all true. Really, really amazing. Like 40% better performance in some cases from last generation. And yes, it is Maxwell architecture. It runs cooler too. So previously when you went up into something like the high-end GPUs and these slim and light designs, not that there are a whole lot of them on the market. And the reason is because it's hard to make them because they made an excessive amount of heat. As those of you who have older Ghost Pros know with some of those toastier CPUs, this one runs cooler, runs quieter much, much faster. And the nice thing about this is you're pretty well future-proofed, as much as you can be with any gaming laptop where, you know, you guys always want the best specs if you're looking for a killer gaming laptop. In this case, this is something that will age well. Two years from now, you're going to still be playing games, newer games, I mean, they don't even exist on the market yet at high settings. I don't know about Ultra, we'll have to see, but that's pretty darn amazing. Anyway, good-looking laptop, they call this aluminum black finish and yes there is a thin sheet of aluminum here it's almost the Lenovo theory of design here where you put a little thin sheet of brushed metal on there and you call it good looking and it's actually not bad looking of course you get that MSI logo that always makes me think of the Ferrari logo we've got our little red gaming dragon on here that lights up by the way using the LCD lighting slim enough Several indicator lights over here, nothing that reminds you of Christmas. No external LEDs other than these, so it's it's not one of those machines you take to the laptop and it starts doing an Alienware kind of, you know, disco light-up thing. It's cool in that respect. Ventilation, very important when you put a quad-core i7-4710 HQ CPU in here. 2.5 gigahertz turbo boost to 3.5 gigahertz. There's a lot to cool down here, and we do have integrated graphics. It's NVIDIA Optimus, so it is switchable with the Intel HD 4600 graphics when you're just doing productivity. But anyway, ventilation, it exhausts out the rear, so it's not burning your hands. It's not giving you sweaty paws. It's not blowing the papers on your desk right next to the computer away. You get the idea. So ventilation on each side, two fan design, a separate one for the CPU and for the dedicated graphics units. So they don't heat each other up. Of course, they can't go in tandem those fans to cool one, particularly if it needs super excess cooling. But given the amount of ventilation here, it's not so much of a problem. Intake on the side. Also above the keyboard deck, there's intake grill area. So it sucks in from the sides and from the top, shoots it out the bottom. We also have ventilation here. This hasn't changed much from the previous Ghost design. We have the little glued-on suede stuff here. I, I, my guess, and anybody's guess, is that has been to avoid searing your legs off if you're actually resting this on your legs, which is, if you're doing productivity, if you're doing MS Office, email, working in Photoshop, you can actually put this on your lap, and it will not hurt. Bottom temperatures, if you're doing productivity work like that, around human body temperature, which is about what we find the limit of tolerable comfort, 
degrees or so. If you're gaming, 120 degrees are the hottest points. That will feel hot. It will not be burning hot. It is considerably cooler, like I said, than the previous generation MSI Ghost. So there's our ventilation. All the stickers are on the bottom here instead of cluttering up the keyboard deck, the usual little rubber feet. Bunch of Phillips head screws. If you want to take the bottom off, the usual MSI tamper-proof warning over one of the screws right there. And, you know, check with the warranty in your country. Generally in the U.S. and in the U.K., the word is, yes, you can take it off, but if you break something internally and then you send it in for warranty work, they'll know that you opened it up and they'll blame you for it. It doesn't mean that anything that ever goes wrong is going to be your fault. So far, they've been pretty cool about that. Still, I'd rather not even see those stickers on a gaming laptop because everybody likes to open it up. On the side here, we have our lock slot. That's where the power plugs in right there. Two USB 3.0 ports, separate mic and stereo audio jacks right there for those of you who have gaming headsets that have both of those connectors. Over here, another USB 3.0 port for a total of, well, three. SD card slot, full-size HDMI, mini display ports. You got quite a few output options. You can use multi-monitors at a time. And built-in Ethernet. This is Killer E2200 Gigabit Ethernet. Open it up and you have, again, the brush black, black aluminum deck right here. You can see where we have both our speakers and ventilation intakes over here. The power button that lights up and it will change color to let you know whether you're using Intel HD 4600 graphics. That'll be blue. NVIDIA GTX 970M, that'll be red, and then charging is amber, so informative. You can see the keyboard is backlit, RGB programmable zone backlighting, no, no special WASD, which is kind of a bummer there, but this is a steel series keyboard, so it's highly programmable, also really awesome tactile feel. If you're gonna use this to type as well, you're gonna absolutely love it. So we have our blue zone here, you can just set up the colors the way I like it. We've got our middle magenta zone, we have a red zone here. You can and pick whatever colors you like for the thing. Gamers will certainly like the programmability of the keyboard and also some of you are really attached to the number pad. We have one. You don't see that all that often on 15 inch laptops. So those of you who are number crunchers or just use the number pad a lot for gaming will be thrilled. MSA does something weird with the keyboard though. They always ship the Windows key over to this side. So those of you who have already gotten used to it, yes it is Windows 8.1 so you use it to switch back and forth for example. Well, guess what? It's on this side over here. Delete key is also up here, which is a kind of odd place for the delete key. Don't know why they did that. Wish they hadn't done that, but hey. FN key controls things like your backlighting for the display, also for your keyboard backlighting and your volume all clustered in this area and along over here. The one thing I'm not in love with is the Elan trackpad MSI. It doesn't have a great track record with trackpads. And it's not a horror, but it kind of is one of those trackpads that gives Windows trackpads a not very good name. It's okay with single movement, and it handles diagonals pretty well with the latest driver install. Multi-touch is a little bit hit or miss. And also, if you're tapping and holding the spacebar to click so you don't have drag lock turned on, I never do because it seems to drag things around when I don't want it to, that'll cause a little cursor jumping when you're doing drag lock, which is to press a button and use your finger at the same time. It's not the world's worst thing, but... Obviously, if you're looking at a slim and light machine, it's probably because you need a laptop on the go and not just gaming, and that's when you're going to use a trackpad. For When you're gaming, of course, you're going to be using a mouse. Our machine is the GS60-064. That's a configuration I know a lot of you like because it has 6 gigs of VRAM, maybe even overkill, especially if you have the 2K display, which is what we have here, even for the 3K display, but I know some of you want that. You can get a variety of configurations. As with, with MSI, we're not even talking about resellers like Gentech and Exotic PC who do all sorts of customizations for you if you want, but many options available. On the motherboard, you have two RAM slots. You have an M2 SSD. You can get this with a single SSD. There's RAID SSD configurations. By the way, that uses... M SATA because it, you need that for the RAID. Sorry, no PCIe here. So anyway, you can get this with 16 gigs of RAM, 128 gig SSD, as one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, which makes a lot of sense because games these days, God, they take like 45 gigs each. You need a lot of space. That becomes nearly impossible with the cost of SSDs. 
something like that with the 2K display, you can get that for under $2,000, say around $1,899 if you want it maxed out in all those good ways. Now you can get bigger SSDs as well with this if you want a 256 or 512 gig SSD. And yes, there's a 3K and even a 4K display option. Now I'm going to lobby for the 2K display, which is what we have here. This is a Samsung PLS 1920 by 1080 matte display. This is not a touch screen. Those of you who love the Metro interface, well, you're going to go a little crazy having to use your trackpad or your mouse to interact with that, but 2K display, good balance for the size of the display, 15.6 inches. If you go up to 4K resolution in a game, especially for a machine like this can run at high and ultra settings in today's most demanding games, are you going to really see a difference? Not so much. Also, it's going to use a bit more in the way of resources and particularly power. And power is never something you have a whole lot of with laptops in terms of stamina when on battery power. I mean, speaking of which, not the happiest story here. Just like most gaming laptops, you're looking at three, three and a half hours running on integrated graphics and battery power when doing normal computer tasks, not when playing games. When you're playing games, about an hour and 45 minutes or so. So typical for a gaming laptop, but it doesn't compete, say, with the 2014 Razer Blade, which is granted a smaller 14-inch model, but that one really pulls off some good battery run times. Anyway, other display options. There is a 3K IGZO panel, and that's available. And that one's glossy, by the way. And there's a 4K option as well, for those of you who want it. And Prices aren't that much more for the 3K, somewhere between $50 and $100 more, 4K, $100 to $200 more. Again, for a laptop, I consider it a little bit overkill, especially the way a lot of games don't handle scaling well, and you're going to have to enable Windows DPI scaling to make things actually viewable on your screen. So how about sound? Here's our wireless microphone. Here it is right near the fans. Not that loud. Not that loud at all. Now, when you're gaming, the fans do get louder, but MSI, well, I mean, they make gaming graphics cards, they do motherboards, they've been doing these kind of laptops for a while. They tune the sound nicely. It's not a high pitch whine, even though it's a thin machine. It sounds not so unlike their bigger models, say the, the Dominator. Uh, you'll hear it more often though, those giant 17 inch gaming laptops that have chassis about yay thick or so and plenty of cooling area inside will be quieter, but when we do our gaming demo video, you'll get to hear it there. It's Certainly you'll hear the fan, but no, it's not obtrusive. And again, it's not something that it's going to burn your coffee table either. Common sense is you use a laptop cooler or something like that and provide a little ventilation underneath if you can. When you're playing games, don't rest it directly on your legs. Don't block the vents on the underside. You know, the usual kind of things. Don't use it with the lid closed when you're gaming if you have an external monitor because it needs to radiate heat out this way and suck some air in. But other than that, it, it's perfectly tolerable as a gaming laptop in terms of sound values. And it's a little bit less high pitched and annoying than the HP Omen 15 we just reviewed, which itself was not pretty, not a pretty noisy thing for a gaming laptop. Now, speaking of noise and temperature and all that sort of thing, this supports Nvidia battery boost. So you can actually do things like choose the shift mode, choose comfort mode while you're gaming, and that will reduce the speed of the GPU and the heat somewhat. Still very playable. If you're playing an older title like Dragon Age 2, I was playing that the other night, plays absolutely perfectly well. You really don't need all the power of the GPU for that sort of thing. You've got green mode, which will step down the CPU and the GPU. Perfectly appropriate if you're doing email, social networking, working in MS Office, anything but crunching a spreadsheet that has, you know, 100,000 rows, then you're going to want the full CPU power. But otherwise, given the quad core i7 in this, this has so much power that even stepping down is going to be fast. And then we have sport mode. This is, and may, let everything run to maximum speed. And then also we have information about our power plant, CPU usage, how much battery is left, memory, we get all that sort of thing. See you too. Now here, device settings, you can choose high performance mode if you want to max things out and you can have the windows key enabled or disabled boy msi hates the windows key don't they there are also shortcuts to nvidia's geforce experience killer network management for both wired and wireless networking by the way this has dual band wi-fi 811 ac it's the n1525 killer card and boy it is killer my god we're getting max speed with our wi-fi ac router even when going 20 feet from the router, 30 feet from the router. It's it's very, very good Wi-Fi here. And then we have access to the Steel Series engine. 
which is your programmable keyboard stuff where you can control the backlighting and put macros on. And all that sort of good stuff right there. So that's good. And MSI really has not loaded with any bloatware. It's useful utilities like that. The only thing that we have on here is GameSplit Caster software, which eh, I don't know how many people use that. We have NVIDIA's own streaming technology for games now. We have Twitch, you know. And now we're going to test out the speakers. This has MSI's usual Dyno Audio stereo speakers with a subwoofer. Some people have given it a hard time. I think it actually sounds very rich and full, having reviewed a lot of these slim gaming laptops, and even some of the bigger ones, like the Asus Rogue 17-inch models that never really have the killer speakers I'd hope for. It's not bad sounding. So we've got 1080p here, and by the way, this display manages to cover 98% of the sRGB color gamut. It has wide viewing angle, 700 to 1 contrast ratio, 350 nits of brightness, so it's quite bright. It's just a great display. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and fun times, it's a gaming laptop. Always fun to review these, but you know, it's not just a gaming laptop. That's what makes the HP Omen pretty so certainly it looks good, and I think that sounds darn good. When you're playing games, you can really hear the dialogue. You get enough of the boom, you know, not like you're wearing gaming headphones, certainly, for it to sound good as well. It, it does a good job. For watching movies, it's also pretty good, and it's a little bit louder than average for a 15-inch model as well, without sounding shrill or hissy or anything like that as well. Now, as always, with gaming laptops, we're going to have a separate gaming demo video. Don't you worry, we're going to test Battlefield 4, Crisis 3, Far Cry 4. You get the idea. Some of today's most demanding games, Tomb Raider, and let me tell you, the hint is it does very well. You can, you can put the settings quite high with this at native 1080p resolution, no less. But how about synthetic benchmarks? It does keenly well there. 3D Mark 11 for the performance test, P9112, 9112. None of this is with anything overclocked, by the way. For the Extreme, X3224, 3224. Very impressive numbers that that certainly beats the, the GTX 860M models running on the same quad-core CPU, which tend to do around 5,000 rather than 9,000 for the performance benchmark. PC Mark 7, 6,006. W Prime computed Pi in 8 seconds. PC Mark 8, the home test, 3,929. Also a very hearty score there. 3D Mark Ice Storm Unlimited Test 129,133 for Fire Strike at 1080p 6508. That's a pretty demanding test there, folks. So the numbers are all there. They're all good. They're all significantly better than what we saw from last generation Ghost. The Ghost Pro is a killer machine. If you're doing video editing, if you're doing number crunching, in addition to gaming, anything that's demanding, software compiling, that sort of thing, web development, believe me, this is one of the most capable machines on the planet. Don't be fooled by the fact it's so thin and light. Speaking of thin and light, here's the power brick. It, it is at least slim. We've seen worse. It's, it's a sizable brick, though. You can see it fills my hand. And for those of you who are wondering, this is a Delta made power supply. It's 150 watts, which is adequate to keep it powered up when playing games. I haven't seen the, the battery charge level actually drop when gaming yet, so that, that's always a good thing. And no, it doesn't throttle based on power, nor does it thermally throttle. You can run this thing with the GPU at 99% for an hour and Temperatures inside, that's always a concern. Outside, sure, we worry about how it's going to feel to touch, but we don't want the thing to die of old age prematurely because it's running too hot. Playing the most demanding games, like Battlefield 4, for example, GPU was between 70 and 80 degrees Celsius. That's actually quite good and significantly cooler than the previous generation Ghost. And the CPU generally between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius, also a very safe temperature. So I wouldn't worry about this thing dying in a year because it's been running so hot. Those are perfectly, per perfectly permissible. I'll tell you, this is one of my favorite laptops ever, honestly. 
I've waited a decade for this more. I've been reviewing technology for 10 years, using it for a heck of a lot longer than that. And finally, we have what you could call a 15-inch Ultrabook that's also one of the most powerful gaming rigs on the planet and can do anything else you're going to throw at it for work. If you do full HD video editing, anything that's really very demanding on this, it can do it. Once you've used a gaming Ultrabook, a really capable one like this, there's just no going back. So that's the MSI Ghost Pro GS60. It's available now. And if you're looking for a high-end but slim gaming laptop that you can actually take to work, not be embarrassed, carry pretty much anywhere, very light, very slim, it's hard to beat. There's one of the best on the market in the slim light gaming category, which admittedly there aren't too many. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.